Well, I came all the way along to get out here to take a then and now. And it's closed, so I can't. So you'll have to use your imagination and imagine that I'm standing a little bit further down and I'm facing back this way, like that. And we're looking down the pier when it was a jetty. Here you go. Yep, definitely slightly different, isn't it? Definitely slightly different. All good. 1867. 1925, before the Lido was built, before the uh, Team Bean was here, before everything, really. 1925, ER. Right, there we go 1925 wasn't raining in 1925 though and it's getting quite heavy now I've only got my fleece on so I'm gonna call it a day okay got a first for this channel I know I'm in a different mode upright it's okay cause that's to match the picture but we've had old photos before we've had old drawings before we've had old paintings before we've had postcards before we've had all sorts of you know have video Norman wisdom this is one we haven't had before, and this is a, um, an advert, Visit Devon by Train. Obviously it was drawn from the perspective of being down on the beach, but you'll see the Ness in the background, and you'll see the Ness House Hotel. Here we go. So that was an advert which would have appeared all over the place telling people to come and visit Tynmouth by train. Lovely. We're going to talk about the story of Mordreff. Ah, what's that? Well, it's not the um, Arthurian legend. It's a house slash hotel. Anyway, okay, so over there is the Lido, which um, I'm sure you all have heard of and know of. But it's about what was it was like before it was actually the Lido. The history of this faction here we want to talk about. So it used to be a big house called Mordreff and in 1937 they turned it into a hotel or it was a hotel in 1937 anyway and it stayed on uh, throughout the war didn't get bombed. Okay it's a little difficult because I'm filming through a fence but as you can see the Catholic Church up there that's going to appear in the picture so I'm going to zoom out. I want you to remember where that is here we go, 1937, Mordreff. Now I've got another picture of it from slightly further down in the 1920s. Here you go. As I say, that was Mordreff. When it was eventually demolished, it turned it into a car park apparently. And then in 1976, they built the Lido, which is what we're looking at here today. So that's the story of Mordreff. There's not a lot more information about that that I could get, I've managed to gather so far. I was only able to find those two pictures, but that's what was here before the Lido, the story of Mordreff. There you go. Anyway, off down the seawall now. What we're going to do this time is just turn slightly that way. Look at that building over there in front of the church. That's St Mary's Court. Here's where it was being built and the roof was being put on in 1986. That was St Mary's roof being on, 1986. Lovely. Let's crack on on my normal walk. actually used to be Dawlish Fire Station years gone by. Oh, roughly around here, 
course the ground has been raised for the car park but we're looking at that building there in the side of it and this is 1880 a load of fishermen posed for a photo something to do with a new place to try to attract them or some place they can stay or something like that i'm not exactly sure but 1880 here you go So that was here, up by the lighthouse, in 1880. Okay, I'm going to jump back now to the 1870s, before plumbing, before the modern bathrooms existed. So if you wanted to have a bath, get yourself nice and clean, what did you do? Well, you came down to the centre of Timmouth here, and you jumped into that bathhouse that you can see in front of me. Here you go. So that was the Timworth bathhouse up this end by East Cliff. As you can see that building just behind the uh, lifeguard or the Coast Guard lookout is the same. Uh, it's a smaller tower on uh, what do you call it? St Michael's. But the pier and the nest are still in view. And so instead of the teen bean you can have a bath. Lovely. Just around the corner here, Northumberland Place. Should be a hair salon. Doing this on the fly because I haven't really lined it up or anything. Let's see. Oh yes, there we are. The hair boutique. That used to be a place called Peppercorns. Here you go. Oh, probably not exact, but near enough you can still see the um, area of the door and the old sign saying Peppercorns Foods. Lovely. 42 Northumberland Place. Shall we get back to normality with a nice little bit of then and now? Why not? Here we go, Catholic Church. In the 1950s they took things a bit further than they do today and they literally sent a group of women to Rome. Oh yes, here we go. So that was the uh, 1950s Catholic Church with a trip to Rome. Lovely. Told you in one of my recent videos about a week ago as I walked down to the cobblers that um, I had a picture of before the fire station was built which I'm going to try and do today. However, it's a little bit difficult to line it up simply because it was taken from one of those windows of those houses we've just been looking at. So I'm a lot higher up in the picture, but it's basically this area over here. Here you go. I'll try and line up another shot a bit further along show you what I'm on about. So there's the fire station and those buildings there would be visible in the photo. Quick flashing back up again, all good. Okay so I can't line this up exactly, you'll see from the picture, because it would involve me being in a boat on the river. But what I want you to focus on, Pink Cottage there, Pamela's old home, the road that goes up next to it and all this being the Morgan Giles shipyard. So none of this is built. 1934, looking at the Forester's Lane with the cottage in the forefront. Let's go and get it lined up. Okay, roughly from here, the old wall obviously, and some heavy waves. Here you go. That's 1975 off the top of my head. Lovely. As we know from the war ones I did, that used to be the town hall over there where that car park is. And there was also a market as well, just a little bit further up that way. And um, that got destroyed in the war. 
and these toilets obviously weren't toilets then necessarily but I want you to notice the top of that that triangular pointed part with the circle on it because that's going to come into the picture as we get down to the end of the streets here and line up the shot to look back so using the top of the toilets there as a reference which will appear in the photo you'll see behind them is the market hall as was before it was destroyed in the bombs and over here was the building of the uh, the well what became the newspaper place here you go Like I say, on the corner there, that became the Brunswick Press, which we've looked at before, but I'll throw up a picture here if I can dig one out. So that would have been the 1920s, when the toilets were part of the buildings that were made up the market hall and the town hall. All good. This car park over here, we often start the walk in it, but as you can tell today, I've started it slightly beforehand. Reason being, this hasn't always been a car park. And um, one of my subscribers, Ian, hello Ian, let me know last night that he was born in this car park. <laughs> he said it wasn't actually a car park, it was the Overcliff Hotel. Now I've had a couple of pictures of the Overcliff Hotel in my back pocket so to speak, never quite got around to using them so as he contacted me and said did I know about it, I thought yes I'll use them today so there's the conquer tree and he's asked me to take a look around the back and see if I can see any nails in it that he stuck in but I don't think I'm going to see very much at all with all that ivy growing up it but we'll try, we'll try no, I can't see any nails here. Can't get any further down because of the fence. And I can't get around the other side to look because there's too much growth there. Never mind. Okay, so what was the Overbrook? Well, it was a huge, great big hotel which was here for many, many years until 1962 when the council did a compulsory purchase on it and turned it into a car park. Right, you see the house here in the middle? middle of the picture that's going to come into it you're just going to see the top of the roof there in the picture I'm about to show so that gives you a location some sort of point of reference and here we go first picture of the Obercliff now I've got another similar one taken from across the bridges which we'll do later on which uh Yes, similar, there's some information on it as well at the bottom. Also, according to Ian, the Obercliff was the site of the town's largest oak tree, which actually had a protection order on it, so they couldn't cut it down. So when they built the car park, they simply built around it, left a two foot gap for it to grow and put it four foot underneath the tarmac. Of course, as you can imagine, it quickly died. And here we are with a very similar shot showing the top of that roof again and a little bit of the bridge where that chap is there and uh, here we go with some information about it so that was the over cliff hotel in Timoth jump straight into a quick then and now uh, can't get the exact thing because it's in there take it from inside the Clifton so I can't really get through here but it's here looking back at these gates or the gates that were here then in 1854 here you go so 1854 looking back at where I was of course all those trees there haven't grown up but you can make out this bank Here, it been taken from up there somewhere, somewhere up there. And the iconic shot of Timoth from the Norman Wisdom film.
the doors are open. Of course, can't go very far past the doors, but they're open nonetheless. Okay, so I'd ideally like to get halfway along there, but I can't, so we'll have to imagine I am. And we turn around like that, and we see the pier in the 1930s. There we go, 1930s pier. Lovely.